Hey everybody, welcome back for another week here at Creators Call Shop. I'm working some more in the blue journal and it is coming right along, but boy, I, I'm taking my time, kind of. I'm just working in it a little bit every day and it's getting as fluffy and, and pretty as I was hoping that it would. However, I'm moving a little bit slower than I wanted to, so I'm not as far along with it as I wished I was. I plan next week to do the final flip through of this with you. So I have a lot to work on. So that means that I probably will be doing some work on something for this journal when we have our virtual craft session today, which I'm really, really, really looking forward to. Can't wait to hear your voices, see your faces. You know, some of you, obviously, I kind of know what you look like from your channels, but some of you I don't. So it'll be really nice to just connect in a more uh, real way with some of you that I've only typed, you know, messages and comments. And I know that some of you can't make it today, but that's okay. We're going to miss you. But this is just the first one I'm trying out. So I will give more details about our virtual craft session today. I keep wanting to call it a Zoom craft along, but it's not going to be on Zoom. We're going through Google Meet. And I will give you more information about that at the end. So if you're wanting to craft along with me today, go ahead and grab your stuff and get yourself um, ready to go. And then first thing, I will show you how those items that I was working on last week turned out. So the first thing that I wanna show you, I'm gonna kind of skip the cover for right now. I'll show it to you here in a minute. But the first thing I wanted to show you was where I put the linens on the back here. And um, I remember I had to paint it first. So even though I painted over it with the gesso, some of those bright colors are still kind of coming through the white paint, but it did dim it down enough that I think it looks really pretty here. You can kind of a little bit see the color and some stuff coming through the linen, but it's not very obvious, it's very soft. And then here's our belly band that we decided to make a pocket. I sewed that on, so that's how that one looks. And then the next thing that I wanted to do was um, do a couple of things with spray adhesive. So I got very brave and I went out into the garage and it was about 32 degrees, maybe even colder. <laughs> My phone said it was 32, but I swear it was colder. So I got really brave, went out in the garage, used the spray adhesive really fast, and then came back in and, and let these air dry inside where it was a lot warmer. I was gonna show you real quick the adhesive that I used. Normally I use this, the Elmer's Craft Bond, and if you saw my video last summer where I was making the um, the giveaway binder for with the vintage ladies in it, I used that. But then I found this spray glue at the Dollar Tree. Now, I, I brought over both bottles because the first time I found it, it looked like this. Second time I found it, it looked like this. I assume they're the same. And the only thing that's um, changed is the packaging. So this is what I used, and it seems to have worked very well. And then after this was all dry and flat, it's, it's looking even flatter now. It was kind of a little wrinkly, but I've sewn, you know, I've sewed around the edges then once that was done. And then I'll show you the other page as well. Let me find it here. Way back here. See all this fluffy goodness? I'm so excited. This is turning out how I want. The other one that I did was this one, the back side of the Dutch Hyacinths. And... I did the bedspread picture here. Then I went around and I sewed, first I sewed this flap down. I didn't fold it over like I did the other page and to make it a little bit narrower. I just left it how it was. So I sewed all the way around this, but then that left this edge a little exposed. So then I sewed down this edge on the outside of the holes. What I wish I had done, and I didn't even think about it, was that I had gone across the top here with the sewing machine before I put it all together because this is just, it's glued, but it still feels like it could come apart. So the first thing we're going to work on today 
is getting some washi out and fixing that. I think I'm just gonna go along the edge with some washi tape and just kind of go over that so that it can't pop up later. And I have some washies that I picked, that I ordered from Amazon. So we'll see, see if any of these look like they might do the trick. Of course we want it to be blue. There's one more. I knew I had another one. I don't think any of these actually look much like blue dishware. Maybe this one. But in terms of color and how everything looks on the page, I feel like this one kind of goes better. Let's see. Let's get rid of these two. this would look nice right up there so I'm gonna use this one and then I'm gonna reinforce it with some with some of my glue stick here the Elmer's craft bond I want to work quickly because boy it's so easy to run out of time and I want to keep these to a reasonable length but um, it's really oops okay I guess we'll use it like that it's really hard um, to stay within my time limit Last week's video just kind of got away from me a little bit. It was going great up until a certain point and then all of a sudden I took off on a tangent, so. <laughs> then that all hope was lost at that point. I'm gonna set that over there. But yeah, I just, I, it's nice to do longer videos, but I don't know about you guys, but personally, I as many people as I try to watch there are my tried and true favorites that I've been watching all along for many years. And then there's my newer favorites from meeting all of you. And um, I just can't watch an hour long video for every single person. <laughs> so I am trying to keep mine uh, so less than that so that you guys have a fair shot. A fair shot at um, watching me as well as other people, you know. Um, of course, Gail Agassinelli was one of the first people I started watching, and of course, when I first started watching her, she only had, she had just hit a thousand subbies, I think, or just slightly over that, so she was, um, just being promoted on her YouTube channel, and so it's been really fun to watch her grow, so that was 2018 when I first started watching her, right before she had her shoulder surgery in 2018, that's when I started watching her. And then about the same time, I started watching um, Diane Shaw over at Shawcraft One. You know, I think I want to put this right behind where the thumb notch is. Since it's got the glue on it, might as well. That way it, you just see the pretty, pick, uh, pretty flowers peeking out right there. I'll save this and we'll use it somewhere else. Yeah, so, and then I was watching Diane Shaw and they were at about the same point I think about the same number of subscribers and it's just been really fun to watch the channels grow but um, to my point point is you can't always watch hour-long videos so I'm trying to keep mine a little bit shorter plus it makes them easier to upload and everything it's quicker to save quicker to upload and all that so you know but the last few I have been recording have taken forever I was gonna show you I added some writing space here and a little, like a teeny tiny little fabric flip there on the front just to cover up the writing that was down there. And that's how that looks. And then I would like to put something here, but truthfully, I haven't found the right thing yet. So maybe I should just put the other strip of this. What do you guys think? I was thinking blue rickrack. I wanted blue rickrack to go, but I don't have any. <laughs> I did a thorough check of my you know, why not? Let's just do, that looks as good as anything else. And then that kind of ties the top and the bottom of the page in together a little bit more. Yeah. So, let's just put this on there. It doesn't completely cover the words, but it'll be good enough. There we go. Let's do that. So as I was prepping for today's video, I was trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to show you guys. I have a lot to do and I still have pages I want to decorate and things I want to add, but um, I was realizing I didn't have enough ephemera. <laughs> well, 
Well, I knew that obviously going in, but um, I just didn't have enough ephemera. And so I started going through my stash of things to see what I did have. And I found a few cute things, but the upshot is that after I went through this journal and counted everywhere that I need to put tags and journal cards, I need to make about 12 of each. So that's what we're gonna work on today is um, tags and journal cards. But before I do that really fast, I wanna show you. Here's my inside cover. Isn't that pretty? I took one of those big, the big uh, cross stitch squares, I cut it in half and put the one half on this side and the other half on the back side. And then I took one of the blue hankies, the one that has these pretty flocked flowers, and I made a pocket and I reinforced it with some paper under there so that this edge has a little bit more um, substance to it as you're sliding things in and out. And I glued it all on and added some trims. So there's the front side and here's the back side. And then another one of my experimentations here with spray spray adhesive and I I have one of those old reproduction Sears catalogs and um, used a page out of that. Now this right here I want to add to this page very quickly because my friend Kimberly, hey Kimberly if you're watching, hello, uh, when she came in October <clears throat> I introduced her to to making clusters and she became a cluster making machine. She just got so excited about it. She loved the idea and um, I want to decide which which angle to put this at because I just I kind of like it going like this but I think it's going to be easier to tuck things in if I glue it this way. Anyway she became a cluster making machine and when she came back in November, she brought me a few of these, and I like this one. I think it looks really pretty and adds to the style of this journal. So you get a special handmade, machine sewn, handmade cluster from my friend Kimberly. And um, the other thing I was talking with her about was um, we were going through my stash of fabrics, you know, and I like to order the feed sack fabrics, those vintage feed sack fabrics from the 30s and and um, I think I don't I don't think they still make them but I think they were probably still making them up through like the 60s at least so I told her about those and of course she loves to quilt so if you're trying to repair the quilts like she's doing for my mom or um, patch an old quilt it's nice to have a stash of feed sack fabrics you can do that with to match the authenticity and the age and so these little strips here are from some feed sack fabric. I um, walked her through going onto eBay and ordering and winning the bid and then what you do after that. So she won a couple bids on some feed sack fabric, which is very exciting. So there we go. There's that. You can see I have my little notes here um, for what else I want to do, but I think we'll just work on some ephemera today really fast. And I want to leave this open so that has a chance to air dry a little bit. Yeah, that looks cute. I've been moving this all around the book trying to figure out where I want it. And this is, I've settled on this today and I think this is exactly the right spot for it. So very cute, very cute. Very pretty. Now I don't think, Anything else? I, oh, there was one other thing I did want to show you, and that was how the fabric flip turned out. Uh, that's just there to identify the page. So here's the fabric flip that we worked on now that it's all glued in place. And then I went ahead and I stenciled under here with that one plastic stencil, and I did it in the brown. So I still have a lot, a lot, a lot of um, embellishing to do. I have a lot of stamping left to do in in the journal, so I would love to do that on camera, but I think I'm gonna be too slow at it. So as I was going through trying to figure out what I wanted to put in here, and looking at the stuff I already had, there are a few things that I um, identified. I, I essentially came up with some things that needed to be still fixed or um, altered. 
So the first thing is uh, these two recipe cards, we're gonna make a booklet and I found some papers for that. These guys just need tag toppers, so that's easy. And then um, these were those pretty little note cards and I wanted to do something to cover up the thank you. This is that cute index card from my order from Celeste. So there it is again, in case you still want to order from Celeste, her beautiful crochet flowers. And uh, she has them in lots of colors. You don't have to just do blue. But we're gonna cover that. And then I have some paint chips that I thought hopefully we could cover up. We'll see, see how far we get. But let's, oh, and then I have these scraps to cut into tags. So I think, like I said, I need like 12, <laughs> 12 journal cards and 12 tags. So those all kind of count as journal cards. These are gonna count as tags. So let's do the easy stuff first. And the easy stuff is putting toppers in these cards. I pulled out some ribbon here that I thought would work. If they didn't already have the holes in them, something like this, these little scraps that I had would have been cool, but they already have the holes in them, so we're just gonna keep it simple. Just put some ribbon through and call it a day. I think I'm gonna use this one. It's this is a baby blue and the ink is kind of a kind of a turquoise. It's that broken china, I think. But it'll work. I went through my ribbon stash and I don't, I didn't have a lot. <laughs> I tried to find seam binding too and just didn't have a lot. So we'll do, do this really fast and that's two out of the way that we've got fixed up. Now my thought was to make one of those pretty knots but That, that was not it. <laughs> I have failed spectacularly. Okay, we're just gonna do the traditional one. And do that first. I always go front to back. I don't know if there's a good way to do that and a better way and a not so good way, but I always just go front to back. There's that one. And actually, I have a seam binding over here. I have this hem tape. This one's navy blue. Yeah, I think the baby blue ribbon still wins it. And um, I always try to make sure I just fasten these back up, put the pins back in, what have you, so that I don't have stuff going all over the place all the time. Yeah, uh, surprisingly, my even though there's always a lot of things out there in blue, my stock of blue, blue uh, embellishments, you know, like ribbons and laces, is not, not very big. <laughs> or it's not the right shade of blue. There's that, so. Okay, these are a little long, but I'm gonna wait until I put them in the journal to see if I wanna cut those down, so two. Two done, yay. Okay, the next one was I wanted to make a booklet out of these and it's gonna go back to back and then we'll just put some papers in between. This says savory beef and it doesn't look very pretty but it does have the blue dish whereas this one looks a little prettier but there's not as much of the blue. So I went through my stash of um, lots of little scraps of lined papers that I have from coffee dyeing and, and other things and backing tags. And so I wanted to use a few of these, just layer them up in here. Let's see, they should all be, I should be doing this on here so I don't get too long or too short. We want them a little bit staggered. Let's stagger. And some long, some wide, some narrow. And we want all of them to be interesting. So yeah, we're just gonna make a little booklet here. I like that one. I'll put him at the back. And I better turn that over or bet you dollars to donuts, I'll end up 
end up putting it on there wrong. Now this one is a scrap from that notepad I've been using, so let's tear it down, make it pretty. Oops. So yeah, this is just a very simple, simple project. I think it was like last year that I did those little booklets using some of these scraps like this um, to make little booklets. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it up above in the cards. So yeah, you can do this with any kind of the recipe cards or just random scraps, you know, like you get in junk mail or whatever. Just make a cute little booklet. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's probably more than we need. Yeah, I wanted savory beef on the front. It's a strata. So what I'm going to do first, I could make several of these, couldn't I? Yeah, I just pulled out the whole little stack of lined papers. But I like this coffee dyed look, so set that aside. Actually, let's do... Let's just add one more, why not? Because we can, there we go. So what I'm gonna do first is staple it and then I'm gonna add the fabric strip that goes over each side to hinge it. But it's nice to have it stapled in place first. So let me grab my stapler. Those are blue staples too. So I have my hammer because every time I staple, I like to smash those down on the back side so nobody gets hurt. I just think that'd be sad if somebody got hurt. And then what we're gonna do is put a strip of one of our one of our fabric scraps across the top here to give it like a little hinge. We don't need a ton of room there. We just need to pick a fabric scrap. I am feeling very partial to this one. Not pretty, that would look good. So let's use that one. Grab out the fabric tack. I keep poking the hole. I haven't tried to make it, oops. I haven't tried to make it bigger because I'm afraid I would make it too big. Oh, you know what? I did not bring over a wet wipe. We're gonna regret that pretty soon. I always do that, and I thought about it earlier too. I was like, remember to get your wet wipe before you start your video. <laughs> so one, one nice thing about doing it this way is that you can cover these staples with the fabric. It might be just a little bit wider than we want, but it's okay, we're gonna go with it. And then make sure that they are lined up evenly with each other. And then I'm gonna trim this, trim along the sides. You can use your um, pinking shears on that if you want, or you can just do it straight like I did. I'm trying, I think I wanna tear those, I'm kind of showing out the side there. So I'm gonna tear these down really fast, these little edges that still stick out. I think this one I'm just going to cut because it's kind of in an awkward spot. There we go. Beautiful thing about junk journaling is it does not have to be perfect. And I love that. I appreciate that. 
Because if I am this slow trying to make it not perfect, imagine how slow I would be if I was trying to make it perfect. Now the other thing, I could just add one right here that you could write on. So let's do that really fast. And I've got my art glitter glue. I have abandoned the metal tip. I'm tired of it. It gunks up. I'm tired of trying to stick that pin in it. But what you do have to be careful of is um, how fast this comes out. Because this tip is just a little bit bigger than the fine tip. But overall, it works just fine. There, that's our back page. Yep, now I need my wet wipe. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry for a second. We'll move on to the next thing. Now, I have all of these that I wanna cut down for tags. So I'm gonna do that, but I don't wanna lose time on decorating these things. So I'm gonna speed up the camera for a minute, and then we will we'll slow down the camera to work some more on these other things. blank on the back. Uh, they could be tags too. And some labels with some of my little punches. So these are all things that I think I might want to use. Of course, I have quite a lot of tags here. So obviously we're not going to use every single one in this journal, but it's nice to have them pre-punched. I want to focus, I think, on the ones that have the blank backs just so they're good for writing. But We'll see, but now I have those ready to stick into pockets. And it's always nice to have these smaller sizes, you know. So there's those ready to go. So that's nice to have that out of the way. So this guy is all dry now. And he needs a flower or something right there. On this one, I think I want to use one of these pretty ones from Celeste. I'm, I'm almost out. <laughs> Time to reorder some more. I love Celeste how you uh, sealed these. Each one has its own little pouch. And then inside, it's got its own little back. Ta-da! So of course we're saving these. I could uh, stamp on these too and um, do some pretty blue flowers and make embellishments out of those as well. I have been setting them over a side so I can do something with them. I think I wanna put this like that, and I think, let's just cut out the heart. I'm gonna have to have my fabric scissors. I want to uh, get this done because I still have to edit, of course. I started kinda late because I was just trying to get myself organized, figure out what I needed to do and then how much of it could I actually show on camera or you know in a reasonable amount of time and um, I still have to make dinner tonight and I'll have to edit what do you guys think how's that look yeah that's cute okay let's do that I'm gonna make uh, sloppy joes tonight for dinner I know there's mixed feelings about Sloppy Joes, but mine are pretty good, <laughs> I have to say. They're pretty tasty, they're not too sloppy. 
Gosh, we haven't had Sloppy Joes for I don't know how long. My son-in-law doesn't like them. But I feel like no winter is complete unless I've had them at least once. And also I'm just trying to make up some foods that I can have handy and in the fridge or the freezer for later on after the eye surgery so dinner's not complicated. And if I make a double batch, we can have Sloppy Joes again in like a month or two. That's what that needed. How cute. Yay. Okay, we are whizzing right along, but I hate to say that. I jinxed myself last time saying that. I won't say that. Don't say that. That's really cute. Okay, so now that's ready to go. Hurrah. Now, now comes the tough part. What do we want to do? What do we want to do with these guys? First thing I want to do is round the corners on these two. I just think that that makes them look a little bit nicer. And then I don't think I'm going to do anything super fancy to them, but I am going to cover up where it says thank you. And this is where these little labels are going to come in handy. Because I think it would just be nice to have to have that covered up, but then have something, I mean you could add your own your own thing to it if you want. I like these darker ones. These darker ones show up very nicely. So let's do that. Let's put these on there. And then you could add another label or add your own word or what have you. Whoever gets this you could just add a word right here or put a white label or handwriting or whatever they want right there. But now the thank you is covered up. And I really think these guys just need a strip of something right there. Let's use this one. I have one in mind, but it's over in my drawer and I don't want to keep popping up because that just wastes time. It's a little bit narrower, but I think I think that would look nice. And actually, let's do it so that the pattern shows up on the blue. There we go. That'll work. So I'm going to just run some glue here. Boy, guys, our weather today it started out all nice and sunny. I was so excited because yesterday was so yucky. So yucky. It's one of those gray, icy, cold, yucky inversion days and you just have no energy. All I wanted to do was cuddle up in a ball and go to sleep, like hibernate for the, <laughs> hibernate for the rest of the winter. But you can't do that, unfortunately. There we go. Unfortunately, that's just not not the best way to live your life, you know? If I do that, that's too close to each other. Okay. There, that way I can cut them apart a little bit easier. I'm just doing this all at once so I don't have to... It seems like it's more efficient. I don't know if it is. <laughs> Probably not. There, that's cute, isn't it? Okay. Hardest, the hardest part is trimming right here. There we go. This is very vintage trim. I think I found it at a thrift store, but you can tell by these these spools, they don't they don't put the ribbons and laces on these things anymore. But it's a really pretty lace. When I first started junk journaling, I went and raided my mom's sewing basket to see what I could find. And she had a few things like that. There. Now, oh, that's cute. Look at that. 
Now we have a couple of um, journal cards, basically, or double journal cards, or just cards. <laughs> That's cute, yay! I really wanted to... getting this right here. I wanted that to go on something. Isn't it pretty how it's just pouring down into the, the two pots are pouring into the cup. And what can I put on there? It needs, it definitely needs something under it. So it either needs like a piece of book page or something gauzy, neither of which I have with me at the moment. And since I'm putting lace here, I don't want to put lace again right there. I know, I know, picky. <laughs> oh, I could put, maybe I could put this down. Okay. Let me fiddle with this and come back and show it to you done and then we'll close out. Okay, I've got it figured out now. You guys are gonna be glad that I spared you the agony of watching me try to figure this out and everything. But I've got it all figured out now and all we're gonna do is put it together. So I backed this little image here on a piece of dictionary page and then I inked around it. I had to use two different inks. One was a gray and then one is kind of a dusty blue and that's how I got the color that matches the, the paint chip. And then I found a strip of lace here I'm gonna add and this will be the tab. And then while I was off camera, I also figured out this paint chip as well. And I've got it laid out here so we're just gonna glue down 
the pieces. Let's look at what we've got done today. This tag, this tag made from paint chips. We did our stack of punched out tags and then I did a couple of little journal cards. Um, I may decide to use these as layers on, on some of these other items I'm trying to, to alter. We did these two right here. Just put little labels over the thank you spot and added some lace and I think that's really all it needed. So those are gonna be really cute to add to our journal. We made this tag right here and I'm gonna wait to put a topper on it till I see where it goes. Um, it may go in a side pocket, it may go in a top pocket. We made that. I need to get these down where you can have them in frame. We made our little booklet with our papers, and then of course I opened it and realized, I, I was thinking that was the back cover, that was the top cover. I added a little snippet of lace right here. I just thought that looked kind of cute. It's okay, it's still writing space on the inside cover, so that works. Oh yeah, we got our little booklet we can stuff inside of a pocket. And then we have our two tags. I'm trying to arrange this so you can see it in your in your viewfinder here. <laughs> there you go. And then we have these two. All I did was add ribbon to them, but they'll get they'll get tucked in somewhere. Okay. I'm going to clear all this up and then come back and talk to you about our virtual craft session today, how that's going to work and what to look for. So let's talk for a minute about our virtual craft session that I'm wanting to do this afternoon. Now I did a test run of this over the weekend with my family so I could kind of test this out and hopefully work out any uh, kinks or major snags that we might be going to have. And the first thing is we can't use Zoom because I have to pay like $100 or, or invest in a monthly fee or something if there's going to be more than three parties present. So my daughter suggested that we use the Google Meet 
And so I also have the link for Google Meet down below in the comments. And what you're gonna do is go to my Etsy shop and send me a message up in the right hand corner on my Etsy page. It'll say uh, Convo or Contact Seller or what have you. Go there and send me a message and just say, I need the code for the craft session. And then I am going to paste a code for you. I'm gonna send it to you. You're gonna copy that and then go to google.meet.com, I think is how it is, or it's linked below correctly. You're gonna go then to that site and put in the link that I give you. And then I am gonna be waiting and I have to let everybody in to join the meeting. Now, when I tested it out on the weekend, we did kind of an instant meeting thing and it was only gonna give me an hour. So I went ahead and scheduled this in advance for today, for Wednesday, and I scheduled it for two hours, but honestly, I don't know if it's gonna make us get off after an hour, so we'll just see. So. I'm gonna have my laptop here so we can do the the meetup and the talking part. And then I'm also gonna have my Kindle off to the side so that I can help answer questions or send the link really fast if I need to, okay? So that's how that's gonna work. And then I just hope that it all works out and we can all just have fun for however long we have, okay? So we're gonna come on, I'm gonna come on at noon my time, and I know I've said this before in the last couple videos, but that'll be 11 if you're on Pacific, uh, 12 here for Mountain Standard, one o'clock Central, two o'clock East Coast, and then UK for you, Lara, um, 7 p.m. So we'll, let's just see what we get. This is gonna be the first one that I do, but it certainly won't be the last and hopefully it goes well and it'll be a learning experience for sure. But I'm really looking forward to hearing everybody's voices and um, just kind of chatting with you in person, asking questions, you know, and I hope that we all can ask questions of each other. This is actually going to help meet one of the objectives that I've had for this channel and that is just to build a sense of community and a place where we can all hang out and you know, be kind to each other, encourage each other. That's something that I strongly desire and one of my missions essentially for starting this channel. So I'm I'm really excited guys, I really am. So down below in the comment box, just one more time, I'll have the link for my shop. So go there, message me, then go to the meet.google.com I also have that link down below, and then I'll also have just these instructions kind of typed out for you. One of the reasons I am doing it this way with some extra steps is because my daughter warned me that if I just put the link directly down in the comment box, we could get some real weirdos and inappropriate displays of um, public indecency. <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> she said it a little bit more funny, but anyway. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can avoid any weird random creepers and weirdos out there by doing it this way. So I'm sorry. I know it's a few more steps for you to take, but um, hopefully that will give us a better session together. Well, that covers it. And I really look forward to seeing everybody here in just a few hours. And now I'm going to close with our quote of the day. Okay, quote of the day is going to be this one. The greatest possession you have is the 24 hours directly in front of you. That's a really good one for me because sometimes I just lose track of the day, lose track of time. Especially this time of year, the days are short and... Um, the weather is yucky and all I wanna do is curl up in a ball and just sleep. But you know, it's important to use the time that we have wisely. So I'll see all of you in just a few hours at our virtual craft session. If you have any questions, if it directly uh, pertains to our craft session today, just send me the message on Etsy. And I look forward to spending time with you all later today. Until then, be inspired and do something creative today. I'll talk to you all in the next video. Bye-bye.